Hey everyone, how's it going? I was uh, in some discords the other day and some people were talking about how to make uh, forests in a certain way and uh, someone in particular wanted to know how to do some Shinar stuff. Um, and I had mentioned that you should go and take uh, screenshots in the, uh, like load up the editor or something like that and go all around Shinaris and take screenshots of the areas that you'd like to emulate or that you like. And um, what I've done for my map, there's not too many uh, areas where that uh, color tone and kind of fallen autumn uh, tones of the uh, um, Shinaris trees work as much. But I'm going to show you the same kind of way, but here with the bliss trees. Now, this tutorial is assuming that you've already, you know, you've got your map in and you, you know, the basics and, and stuff like that. Uh, so what you'll want to do is have a library uh, obviously with the tree types that you want. So whether that's the Shinaris one, which would just be plants uh, or plants bliss. I'm working with plants bliss. I'm gonna share this file with you guys. Uh, I have organized, I took the time to organize by type, size, and uh, whatnot, and uh, actually like height and stuff. I, as you can see, this I used to actually have this all in one big row, but this made it a little easier to kind of split it up uh, and then have a couple of these different types. So here's how I make little clusters that you can essentially copy and paste and you make like a variety of like five, six different clusters that cover more clear areas, more dense woods and whatnot. And I'll show you that process. I'll also show you how to export it if you're, you know, cause you may be working on a project with someone else or whatever. Um, and so that you can actually bring the objects in and out of uh, terrain builder. Um, I wouldn't recommend necessarily using uh, the editor for all of your, for laying down all your trees and stuff if you're wanting a, a good specific variety. Now if you're just trying to lay down something quick, the daisy editor is okay with that, but uh, this is something I would recommend if, uh, other than laying down every tree individually. Um, so yeah, over here, here's a quick example of some other clusters I've made. Um, some have more of an open clearing, some are a little more dense like this, uh, and there's different sizes of trees. Uh, some, yes, uh, the different types you'll notice. And th these are when you're separating specific types out. Uh, so let's go ahead and hop to it and show you kind of how I went about doing this. Okay, so once you officially uh, either use the one that I shared or you put together all your own trees and plants, whether it's for Shinaris or for your custom ones or, or here, uh, once you're to this point, here's how you kind of go about making your own custom clusters. Um, right now I'm going to be working with evergreens uh, primarily, so we'll just start and go down the line here. We're going to grab this biggest one. We're going to come over here make sure you got a flat clearing spot. That's important. I just got a... Uh, little island here and you want to make sure it's flat. Now it will flex, uh, for example, um, if you had a raised elevation here. Um, sorry, just let me switch this. Um, so see how I'm raising the elevation right here like this? Um, it will automatically adjust your uh, tree. So if you had a group, right, like this, um, and had those all selected, like uh, you've already made your cluster, as you'll see, they will follow this. So this is where it's important to know how you orient them. You don't want to, you can rotate and spin them this way but you don't want to mess with your other axes or you're going to end up having them turning and like bending into there. And uh, yeah, so uh, I just wanted to mention that, but you will, they will automatically adjust. So if you're wondering, well, what about, you know, if you make these clusters, how are they going to work out? And when you have elevation, that's how it's kind of automatically a part of it. Um, accidentally duplicated that a couple of times. Okay, so yeah, you're going to grab the biggest one here. And come over here and press C or if that's what I mean that's what mine is uh, it should be the default and we're gonna go ahead and copy uh, three trees like this just kind of in a little triangle and then we're gonna do two and then one um, 
I'm going to grab the next tree. And we're going to do three, two, and one. And you find the spacing that you like. So if you feel like you need to go in and adjust, or if you want to go ahead and make it almost equal here, you don't have to do the exact like three, two, one. Um, this just gives you a good separation for your cluster. So there's not repeats and they're not in a direct line. You're just getting more of a dynamic look because as you do copy and paste or rotate these around, for example, like you highlight them and you adjust, that spacing is going to be important to not, you know, having things look like the same as you're walking through and all that. Um, so now we're going to grab this tree. We're going to go one, two, three, one, two, and one. I'm going to move that a little bit. And you kind of want to keep it either as if you're going to be like in a square or a, or a circle. Um, not, I mean, it can't, you can do weird shapes if you want, but you'll run into harder placement uh, later. Um, so going down the line, now we've got one, two, three. And you could do them wider if you want things to not be so dense. One, two, and one. I'm going to add a couple more over here because I do want this to be a little more dense. So you can kind of play it on both sides, like 3 to 1, 3 to 1 if you want. Uh, let's go ahead and put another one right there. Um, so now we've got a good variety there. And now we're coming into a different uh, tree type. You know, those were taller with less on the top. And we're coming into the bottom here, into the picabus. Um, uh, and so I don't even know if that's how you say that. That's how I call it. <laughs> But now you come in, like, find your spacings here now. Don't even have to worry so much about counting. That just gets you started. And um, find a spacing that you like and are comfortable with. Um, do some on the, a little more on the outskirts. So we've got a variety there, right? Um, and let's throw in a couple of these. And I'm shooting for a little more dense here. You can definitely go less dense than this, um, but this isn't too bad. This is a this is a decent spacing, um, but I don't want it to seem like these kind, the more fluffy kind, are going to be uh, uh, overtaking the rest. So we're about at this like length and size. We're going to want to go out now. We're going to fill in. So you just repeat with these three, um, and I may speed up the video after this, but. You'll get the idea. Now I like having some of these smaller ones more, a little, a few more of them on the uh, outside because uh, as you're connecting them, the little bit of open spacings between uh, makes a, a good difference. It's like you're feathered out as you're going and transitioning into the next one. So it's not such a hard uh, overlap or transition. Uh, so like, you'll see that all Maybe pop a few of these uh, out a little further. Uh, and then you can obviously throw them in there as well. Now, I'm not wanting to go for too much clutter for these ones because a lot of them are going to be on hills. And you, when you have the smaller sticks and the clutter and the whatnot, uh, that gets a little harder for the hills to um, look as good. Um, so what I'm going to do is we'll come in here I'm going to show you a little tip and trick uh, that I did to add variety of clutter. So you already start with these. You've got these other sticks on the ground, right? Uh, you can scale them a little bit. Careful scaling, though. Um, but what I did, all these ones I made myself right here. Uh, and what I did is I just took this branch. I'll come over here and show you. We'll zoom in a little bit. So I got it once, right? 
that's a normal size. I'm going to shrink it down just a little bit because I'm wanting this to be clutter on the ground, right? And this is how you can make a variety of different branches. Um, so I'm going to copy it again, shrink it down a little bit more, and I'm going to put it at an angle on there. And then I'm going to copy another one, shrink it to a slightly different size. And now, now it's like a bigger fallen branch, right? Uh, we can even add another smaller one up here. Um, and you'll grab all those at one time and you can rotate uh, scale, which scaling is going to throw it off a little bit. We're wanting it to be small. Uh, and then you can copy and paste. So these are just different. Uh, I've got a variety of different ones I've made uh, doing that exact same thing I was just showing you. Um, so let's say we take one of those we don't need too many or too many fancy things going on here but we can throw like one right there that's you know we only need like one or two unique ones in this uh, let's just make sure it's about the same yeah and then um, now we'll uh, head over here and look at some of these other options we have these will match okay um, I've already got these separated in kind of a shape that I like. Uh, so I'll show you, you just take and select a few of those. You have to, to know how to do that. You multiple, you just have to mess with your key bindings. Um, and we're gonna kind of put it in between a bigger tree like that and throw down just a few. I'm, I'm just doing this quick. You can be a little more tactical on your uh, placement and whatnot. Um, I lost them there. So like. Uh, but like I said, I didn't want too much clutter for these because they're mostly on hills. Um, but right around at the base of trees and stuff, they were good. Um, so that's about the level of uh, clutter I'm probably going to do uh, of that kind. Now this kind of clutter, I'll pick usually just a little variety of these different plants. And you can set them up in a way like you would maybe around a tree. I usually like to think in threes or fours with like a, uh, let's see, let's get a couple different ones. Uh, that one's the same as that one. So we'll get there. We got a few different sizes right here, right? And they're a little offset. So we're going to grab all those and pop over here. And uh, we're going to place them and kind of rotate them in a couple spots. I keep doing that. Sometimes you can make yourself a separate, uh, and I've done this before with bushes and clutter, but you can make a separate layer when you're making them and then just put them all on the same one um, so that that doesn't happen. But this way you're kind of, you're, you're spending your time and putting, you know, take your time when you're making them. I'm just doing this for tutorial, but take your time making a really nice template here that you can share and reuse. You're already going to have regular gla uh, grass or areas and things, but there we go. So now we've got kind of a basic thing going on. Um, let me back out a little bit. Um, I'll show you how to export this. You're going to select it all. Well, first I'll show you kind of how to use it. I don't like this one. That one's way too far out. I'm just going to get rid of it real quick. Uh, yeah. So just look it over, make sure it's kind of how you like. Um, I'm liking this one for what I have in mind for it. So um, let's just maybe scoot that one in a little. Um, that one there. Okay. Now I like it. I'm going to uh, select it all. Okay. And now that we've got it all selected, we're going to go up to File. We're going to, I said that weird file. Uh, export as objects, but we want to make sure we just, we could do a whole layer if you only specifically did something on the layer, but we want, uh, like an active layer is what I mean, but we want to do selection. Uh, if you're just backing up like all your objects on your map and stuff, sure, do a document, that's great, or you could individually do your layers if you want to keep them separate, um, but we just want selection here. And I already have this on a low flat island by sea level, so I'm not going to mess around with these other things. Uh, they should be able to export import fine. And now we want to select all. That's going to grab everything that we got there. And then uh, we would obviously need to 
to find the path. Um, for now, let's just, I'm just gonna put this on my uh, downloads and um, let's just call it uh, template cluster. Um, and evergreen, I guess, so we know what kind. Evergreen one, if you're gonna make multiple. Uh, and then we'll save that and boom. So then you'd have it uh, right where you need it and you can, you do the same process. So you would go to import uh, objects and find it and then pop it in. Um, but let me show you kind of how to use them. Um, I have a spot already that I'm working on that we can do this. So we're going to grab all these and normally I've been setting them aside, you know, with the different kinds so you can have everything where you need and use them. But um, I'm going to take these ones and we're going to hop over to a mountainside that I'm kind of working on in hillside area. And I'm going to bring them in. Uh, we want to be down over here. Okay, so let's see. I kind of wanted to, uh, we'll start in this area. So let's just pop them down to start with. Um, now, another thing I didn't show is you can make a separate cluster and don't go too far on this, but you can scale it up or, or down a little bit. I wouldn't really scale down much or up too much. But if you do it just a little bit, see how that brought everything together and it's just a little more dense than over here and just kind of closes it. That's what I would do with each cluster you make. Just make a slight uh, engorgement of each and then you can uh, use the variety of those two. So now I could actually like, I could take this one up on the hill with some of these like taller ones. And, uh, and now I can come back, grab this one. This helps to be zoomed out actually. Uh, so let me do that. And I'm, I'm trying to keep this one uh, around 15 minutes so about half the length of my last one I did um, looks like I didn't grab everything uh, that's also helpful why to zoom out and um, and you can start placing these as needed and the cool part is you you can select since you're kind of copying and pasting and things uh, so say we put another one like right here over at this uh, angle running along we can select a smaller portion of it and fill in gaps and leave kind of natural little uh, spaces and clearings in here. Um, you know, if you're just wanting a certain like shape, just highlight that much and grab it. And uh, that's the basic uh, idea of how I, I'll make a variety, like I'll make like five or six of these, pop them all down in a row like you had seen on that island. And then I have a variety of more dense, more clutter on the ground, uh, these kind for hills that work much better where there's only a few sticks and things where you're not going to be running into weird logs and stumps that are popping out. And uh, like I, I'll even show you where I had some weirder things. See, if you have the extra stuff, sometimes they're, the way they clip in is going to be a little different if you've got more clutter going on or these fallen trees and stuff. Sometimes it works out fine, but uh, it's just an example. Um, so yeah. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this and it was helpful. If you have any questions, ask. I'm not some super expert or anything. I'm just trying to share some helpful tips that have worked for me. So hopefully it's uh, a value of you in any way. Thanks for watching.